Um, so uh, the next step, so normally what I'm going to do when we, when we have a, um, a, a study and we're going to analyze the data, normally I'm just going to give you the data, kind of tell you what to do with it, and give you an assignment where you summarize the data, answer the question, do all that stuff. I'm walking you through the process now, and that means it's, it's a little bit in reverse order from how things are posted here because I'm putting the data down here and um, some videos and stuff. Normally, it's just gonna be like, do this assignment, here's the data you use to get it done, All right? So we started here, we got our data sorted and analyzed and we have a graph. And some of you looked at that graph and you're like, oh my gosh, I can answer our question with it. If you weren't able to do that or you didn't try to do that, that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to do that as, as part of what we do right now. Um, I'm going to um, walk you through the process of using our um, lab report format and this example lab report template to, um, to document your work and get it turned in. So listen really carefully because there are some really common things that students do that, um, that are really not what we're looking for. Okay, so the first thing is um, if you click on, um, on plant question lab report, it'll open up the assignment. And this is where you're gonna turn in your work. Okay, so if you, yours, mine says published and edit, but yours should say start assignment. You don't have to do that yet because you don't have anything to turn in. Um, there is a link here to a document called class lab report format. And if you click on that, then what you'll see is a, a document that I wrote these are instructions. This is a general set of instructions for how to tell me what you did on any kind of a lab that we do in this class. And um, what I don't want to see, and this is, um, this is one of the things that I really want you to hear because this is a really common mistake that people make, so listen up real carefully. Um, I do not want to see these instructions. Don't turn in the instructions. Don't turn in something that has this paragraph here or that has this stuff. I don't need to see the instructions. I wrote them and I have them. I don't need to see them again. What I want to see is a report that uses this general format. If you're the kind of person who's like, well, okay, but wouldn't it be easier if you just gave us the format and we filled it in? That's fine. I have that for you. It's right here. Here is the example lab report format. And if you open that up, then you'll see a document that doesn't have instructions. This is an example. And this, if you want, you can just go to File Menu, choose Make a Copy, and then give it a name, the same as before. Don't call it Copy of Example Lab Report. If you call it that, the next time you go to look for it, you're not going to have any idea what's in it. You're going to have to open it and, and like check it out. Some of you also, and actually will just tell you, like I think this is really funny, but it's not that helpful to you. Some of you like to call your documents funny names, like bio, 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 or Brigar is the worst, Brigar is the worst, bio, 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 or like plant thingy, or stuff for bio, and all of those things, they actually do amuse me, and it doesn't make my life difficult at all because when you turn it in, it goes into Canvas in an assignment under your name. So I don't need to see what assignment it is. I, I know, I can figure it out, but it'll make your life more difficult because down the road, you're gonna end up with about 100 documents, all of which are called, called bio, 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 sucks, Brigar's the worst, plant stuff, lichen stuff, some other stuff. And so don't give it a meaningless name. Call it plant, question lab report and then put your name on it and I'm putting second period because I already made one of these for seventh period so I'm gonna have two copies of this and I want to be able to tell them apart if you give it a name like this then three weeks from now if you have a zero on canvas because you forgot to turn it in and you come to me and you're like Brigar I did that thing but can I still turn it in I'm gonna say yeah and you're gonna be able to just find it right away and that's like helpful that's a helpful thing Okay, and then all of this stuff in here is example. You're not actually gonna turn in um, 
this stuff or this stuff or this stuff or this stuff, you're going to duplicate that, but you're going to target what you write for our study. Okay, and I'm going to walk you through that. We have about 40 minutes, and I'm going to give you time for each of these sections. I'm going to show you real quick how to do all of them, and then I'm going to stop the video, and then we'll start, and we'll do the first one for just a few minutes, okay? So here's how I always start. I start by making sure that my um, uh, title is accurate. Plant question lab report, this isn't seventh period biology, it's second period biology. And then the introduction, um, I'm gonna type something here and you can too right now. You can type this along with me. The question our cl class was studying investigated the relationship between, and then I'm gonna delete all of this stuff because we, we weren't looking at lichens we, or pollution. We were looking at the health of the leaves on a white alder tree and the width of its trunk, okay? And we'll come back to this in a couple minutes because we're not done with the introduction. But this is how you can start, and this is how you can start all of them. Every time we do a lab in this class, every time we do an activity, there's gonna be something we're trying to figure out. So the very first thing in your introduction should be what we're trying to figure out. For the methods, and I'll go through this again in just a second, but for the methods, um, you, your overall goal here would be to give people instructions that they could use to collect similar data somewhere else. So you're not, you don't have to say things like, okay, first I walked out the door in Brigar's classroom. And then I stepped in a big pile of mud because it was raining. So I had to take my shoe off and I hopped into the hallway and I went into the bathroom and I scraped the mud into the garbage can and then I washed my shoe off in the sink. Like none of that stuff matters. What we want to know is how did we actually collect the data? So to collect our data, we located white alder trees on Crescent Valley's campus for each tree, and then I'm gonna give you one little tip here, and then I'm gonna have you think about the rest in just a minute. For each tree, we measured the trunk width by holding up a meter stick to the trunk. Okay, that's probably about as good as we need to do. Like, it's, it might be helpful to do something like make a drawing, which you can do. You all have touch screens on your Chromebook, so I would probably do that. I would probably insert a drawing, and um, you can do something like this. Here's my, here's my trunk, yoink, and here's my meter stick, yoink. And then I'm gonna just kind of make a little arrow that, you know, just kind of shows that we just sort of estimated, oh, that didn't stick, estimated, and then I can even type, I can type some words. We estimated the width of the trunk in centimeters. Something like that doesn't take long and that's actually really helpful information. I mean, you could probably do better than I did. I think just about anybody could do better than I did, but that's not terrible. All right, and then the next thing that you're gonna do is copy and paste your results in. And um, so I'm gonna delete this table and delete this graph and I'm gonna delete this little piece here, which we didn't do. And um, from my analyzed data, I'm going to highlight my summary data table, right click and copy, and then I'm going to paste that in here. And you can paste unlinked or linked to spreadsheet. And then you do the same thing with the graph. And the discussion, we'll get to that. 
we'll do that last. I want to show you um, what all of these things are going to look like in a little bit more detail. Um, so this is the instructions, for the general instructions for the lab report format. For the introduction, here's some things to think about. One, your question needs to be in there. It should be in there for everybody. Two, what else? What else goes in there? And what I would suggest is we did some background research for your plant portfolios about white alder. So you have some research that you could include about white alder. You know whether it was native or non-native. You know its full name and its scientific name. You also brainstormed some interactions and thought about some questions that you might have. All of that can go in the introduction. For the methods, what I would suggest here is it's pretty important that you describe those leaf health categories so that somebody doing this somewhere else would know, oh, this is how I know if it's mostly unhealthy or mostly healthy. You also could talk about how we created the graphs and analyzed the data, because that's important as well. If somebody's gonna try to duplicate this study, they need to know how we interpreted the data. Your results, you're gonna have your summary data table and your graph. In general, down the road, we're gonna do one additional thing that I haven't showed you yet, which is using a statistical test. We'll generally use one of two kinds of statistical tests, either something called a t-test, something called a linear regression. We didn't do that for this, so you don't have to worry about it. And the discussion, part of the discussion is an interpretation of the statistical test. We didn't do that, so that's not gonna be in there. In the discussion, you're gonna talk about what our answer is based on our data, and you're gonna come up with some follow-up questions. And I'll walk you through that when we get there. We're, we're not today, I'll walk you through that today when we get there, but I'm not gonna talk about it now. Um, and the only thing that I wanna mention about the discussion that's important is I have these numbers. You shouldn't have those numbers. You're not gonna have one. My answer was this, two. My statistical test said this. Three, some explanations I have are blah, 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 blah. You're gonna write it like in paragraphs. It's like a story that you're writing. So, so these one, two, and three should not show up in your discussion. This is just to help you kind of keep organized about these three things should be in there, but they don't need to be numbered, okay? So um, I'm gonna stop the video here.